in detail at the time. Question number two, Todd McLean. Thank you. To the Minister of Finance, what is the impact on the Crown's finances of the government's tax changes since the 2008 election? The Honourable Billing. Mr. Speaker. Uh, the, the government has taken a number of steps to improve the incentives in our economy in order to encourage investment, savings and create jobs. As well as that, uh, so in 2009, the government cancelled tax cuts scheduled for 2010-11, which are already booked in the Crown's books, the 2008 election tax package and the 2010 budget tax package uh, both encouraged work and saving and discouraged spending, borrowing and property speculation and we made further savings in Budget 2011 through changes to KiwiSaver and the Working for Families tax credits. Overall, these changes will substantially reduce deficits and government debt compared to the situation the government inherited in 2008. Todd McClay. By how much will the government's tax changes reduce deficits and debt? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, as we have explained many times, total revenue effect of the government's tax changes were negative in the first two years, that is 8, 9 and 2019. This provided appropriate support for the economy while uh, New Zealand was in recession. However, these changes now collect a more revenue from 2010-11 onwards. In fact, taking into account all the tax changes by the government, it will collect 270 million more revenue in 2010-11, 1.5 billion in 11-12, 1.8 billion extra in 2012-13, and 2 billion more in 13-14, compared to what was forecast when we became the government. Todd, McC Todd McClay. Thank you. One of the reasons for tax revenue falling as a percentage of GDP since 2008, as noted by the Inland Revenue Department and in its briefing to incoming ministers. The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, a good, a good portion of that is due to the impact of the global recession. This reduced tax from banks, uh, financial institutions and investment funds, as well as, as, well as PAYE and GST. To the extent that tax policy changes have reduced this percentage, they were overwhelmingly changes introduced by the previous government, including a fiscally negative cut in the company tax rate, which they did not pay for in April 2008, and fiscally negative personal taxes under Labor in October 2008. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. With regard to Budget 2010 and the tax changes in Budget 2010, was Treasury wrong when they projected that the fiscal impact of those budget changes, of those tax changes, would be negative $1.1 billion over four years? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, the Treasury forecasts were uh, published at the time, and as we said, uh, the tax package was roughly fiscally neutral with some extra cost, some cost in the first year uh, and turning to a positive uh, impact uh, by about year three or four. Uh, of course, the reason for those tax changes was fundamentally to bring an end to the bonanza of debt and spending, which had driven the economy uh, to change order, to a focus... Order, order. Order. The member just asked whether the Treasury was wrong, not what the reason behind the tax changes were. Uh, point of order, Dr Russell Norman. Uh, Mr Speaker, you have very helpfully assisted members in understanding Minister's answers. Did the Minister say they were right or wrong because I couldn't tell from his answer? It appeared to the Speaker that the, well, the Minister said those were projections at the time and the Minister I've, appears to have given the House updated figures today, uh, but I may be wrong in that matter, uh, and the Minister should correct me if I'm wrong in that interpretation. It appears that I'm not. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Was the Treasury wrong when they produced the financial statements of the Government of New Zealand for the financial year ended 30 June 2011, when they gave the figures for the updated impact of the 2010 tax changes, and the updated impact appears to be twice as bad? as the projections in the budget, which would appear to be about $1 billion negative in the first nine months of the operation of those tax cuts. The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, the uh, member continues to mix up 
the effect of collecting less tax from a, a lower growth in the economy or lower inflation in the economy, and sometimes both together, with the impact of tax rate changes. Uh, I might just point out to, to the House the tax package has only just completed uh, the first full tax year on the 31st of March. Uh, it's actually only been in place now for wholly in place for one year. Uh, and it is a bit hard to tell from this close up uh, just exactly what effects flow from the changes in rates and what effects flow from a slower economy or lower inflation. Point of order. Point of order, Dr. Russell Norman. Um, so, sorry, Mr. Speaker, but I'm, uh, the member may well have an opinion about my views on things and, and so forth, but I'm interested in whether he agrees with Treasury's figures or not. Uh, that's, the, that's the essence of the question, and, and I didn't really hear whether he did or, or he didn't. If the Minister could some, uh, give an answer in relation to those Treasury figures, it would be helpful to the House. Well, the Mr. Billing. Speaker, of, of course we agree with the figures. They are a record of the government's accounts, and in, in that sense, they're factual information. Uh, what we disagree with is the member's analysis of them, although I'd have to say he is much more uh, astute and persistent about these issues than the four economic spokesmen of the Labor Party. Uh, Todd McClay. What other benefits are the government's tax changes delivering to the economy? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, uh, the tax changes were one part of a wider programme to tilt the economy towards savings, e exports and productive investment and away from the excessive borrowing, spending and property speculation that drove our growth through the previous 10 years. Uh, we need to tilt the economy, we need to tilt the economy so that in the next 10 years we build our, build our capacity to earn a living from the rest of the world rather than borrow it, as the previous Labor government did, and thereby damage the economy. Question number three, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Mr Speaker, this